One of the benefits of Mental Health Awareness Month in 2021 is that it gives us a time and a space to talk about the collective trauma of the past year that might take decades to overcome. In 1918, a flu pandemic that started in Missouri ravaged the world. Following that pandemic, according to John Barry, the author of the book, The Great Influ Influenza, the rates of mental illness as a result of the physical impact of the disease on the brain skyrocketed. No doubt the trauma over those two years impacted a generation. We've come a long way since 1919. We have a better understanding of the impact of trauma on the mind and on DNA. We have a great understanding, thanks to the Native American sociologist, Maria Yellow Horse Braveheart Jordan, on the concept of intergenerational trauma. The notion that we pass on through our actions in our DNA, trauma from one generation to the next. The death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man, at the hands of the Minneapolis police in 2020. The January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. And the election itself, the fears on both sides of the political spectrum, contributed to a difficult year. As a coach who focuses on leadership, psychology, and mental health, I remember early in the pandemic, that my clients who had experienced anxiety before fared much better than those who had not experienced it at all. It was old hat for them to feel panic and they had many tools to cope with it. For others, I found myself pointing to the title of the book, Maybe You Should Talk to Someone, a book by Lori Gottlieb, a therapist who thought, sought therapy. It was a motto for 2020 and 2021. Clinicians know that when you experience extreme anxiety, it's critical to talk to someone within the first six months or so. The acute stress disorder phase, it's important to talk to someone about your trauma. We see this in everything from car accidents to rape cases. We know the outcomes are much better if you speak to someone. <clears throat> As someone who has bipolar disorder, I've focused mostly on finding therapy and medication for that disease. My medication has been working well for years, so I drifted away from therapy by early 2020. That changed by April for an assortment of reasons, including bad behaviors that I hadn't seen popping up for years. Maybe you should talk to someone, I told myself. Maybe I should take my own advice, I thought. And it's paid off. My new therapist and I have explored the intersection between my tendency to disconnect emotionally, to disassociate from stressful situations. It's probably an outgrowth of my experience seeing hundreds of dead bodies by my mid twenties. That was as a journalist. <clears throat> I was also a witness to the September 11 attacks. Disassociation is a great defensive mechanism, I will admit. It made the pandemic a bit easier to respond to, but it also had the negative impact of being maladaptive. It saps the joy from life just as it washes away the pain. Addressing our anxieties early on helped prevent us from developing these well-intentioned but maladaptive coping skills and they help us live better lives. I encourage you all to talk to someone. For those of us who care about mental health, one of the greatest challenges, one of the greatest challenges in responding to this year will be to fight stigma in order to ensure that more people than 1919 get help so we can ensure more positive outcomes and quality of life for years to come. I'm deliberately wearing this jacket from the Broadway play, Dear Evan Hansen. The play is about a young high school student who deals with social anxiety and other anxieties. 
The play did an amazing job of demystifying and normalizing anxiety. Evan decides, with a little bit of a nudge, to talk to someone. And his therapist, Dr. Sherman, recommends that he write a letter to himself detailing what will be good about each day. Evan struggles with depression as well and wonders about his destiny and how he's going to make it through. Therapy can be painful, I'll admit, but it can also heal. Dear Evan Hansen, he writes, continuing, today's going to be an amazing day. And here's why. Because, because today, um, all you have to do is just be yourself. It resonated with me on a number of levels, in part because my self-protection, my fear of seeking treatment, my desire to be stronger than my mind, is what led me to suffer for years from something you don't have to. Maybe you should talk to someone. Thank you.